Hello! Welcome to Wine Crime and Mystery Chronicles. Here on this particular channel, we talk about all things, well, we talk about wine, we talk about crime, mystery, all that have and is centered around real estate. Some type of real estate aspect, because I love all things real estate. So it has some, maybe a very small real estate aspect to it, or a really big real estate aspect to it. but. It will be incorporated somehow. And so I am Danielle, and today we're going to be talking about Anna Rose is the ghost in the Dice Road Cemetery. And so I found her story so fascinated that I wanted to bring it to you guys today. After bringing you the Dice Road Hell House story last week, I feel like I didn't really go deep into the magnitude of paranormal activity that was occurring at this house. I feel like I left out so much about, you know, how much of activity that was going on there. They were getting, you know, there was activity daily, weekly, monthly, for two years they endured this, of uh, having knives and dishes fly across the room by having a series of large bangs. It is said that inside the home, there would be sounds like there's an explosion as though it was some type of bomb going off. And I couldn't even imagine, just, I couldn't even imagine something like that occurring. And so I don't feel like I really dug deep into, you know, what this family went through what they had to endure you know through this time period but if you have not watched the um, Hell House on Dice Road movie on Amazon then please go do so also um, the person who created that documentary movie also has a podcast and on this podcast he also goes in depth in my last video, you, I took some clips from his podcast, which you would have saw there, but you can also watch the podcast and learn so much more that I may not have went into. And if you did not see my video from last week, please, I'll drop the link below. Make sure you see that. And so um, let's get started. First, we're going to start with talking about what I I'm drinking for tonight for this episode and I have a premium rosé wine and it's called Rosa and it's from St. Sebastian and St. Sebastian Winery is located in St. Augustine, Florida. It is a really nice winery and their sister winery which I had the Southern Red, I believe I used the Southern Red when I talked about the Menendez Brothers story. And for this particular wine, it is really good. It has that, the same as the Southern Red, it has that muskin grape. I don't know if I'm still saying it right, but it is a very distinct taste and smell. This particular wine is very light and fruity. Not really sweet. It has a little sweetness to it, but it's not overly sweet. It's perfect for a maybe a afternoon lunch with I'll say no just as a disclaimer I'm not the perfect person that does wine pairing to pair it with food but if I had to imagine what this would be good with it would taste great with a like some fish and a really light summer salad and this it would be perfect and so if you have never been to St. Sebastian's in St. Augustine, Florida, or to the um, Lake Ridge Winery in Claremont, which is right outside of Orlando, those are two wineries you must um, visit. Um, they have a free wine tasting that is fantastic, so enjoy it. <laughs> Let's get started with the story. Anna Rose is a very shy, timid young lady. At the age of five, it's 1816, and there is a house fire. 
at her home in Italy. Everyone in her family perished except for her. Um, to this day, they don't know exactly how Anna was able to survive that fire, but she did. This particular fire was intentionally set by her father in an attempt to kill his entire family and himself. Very sad times. So at this point, Anna is an orphan, five years old, no family in Italy. And so her aunt, Stella, came to get her from Italy. They moved to the U.S., they moved to Stella's home in Richland Township, which remember I told you about Richland Township um, before, and Anna took the last name of Rose. It was her aunt's attempt to kind of conceal her old life because after the fire, Anna really didn't remember any, well, she didn't remember anything that happened with the fam with, with the fire, with her family, and she vaguely didn't really remember her family. So unfortunate. Such a young girl to have to endure such tragedy. So her aunt wanted to shield her from that, so she changed her last name so she wouldn't be able to research her family's history. And she also didn't want Anna to know how mad and crazy her father was because she felt that it was going to affect her and that maybe she would take on some of those traits of her father. So she kind of didn't share the tragedy with her that had happened in her life. Anna made friends with a young Indian boy named Dark Hawk. Hawk was a part of the Salki tribe in, in this area. And so they had their own little tribe. And this tribe was about a half a mile away from where Anna's Aunt Stella lived. Stella was friends with the Salki Indians and so they had an understanding and a friendship. Anna and Dark Hawk used to play all the time on the Indian burial ground which today is at Dice Road Cemetery which was not really close to where um, Stella lived. The Salk Indians believed, was very superstitious, they believed in good and evil and so they knew the story about Anna's family and what happened to them and so they sought to treat her with their herbs and teas to try to bring out a good spirit to ward away any evil that may affect her in her life. Around the age of 14, Anna started to notice how her beauty. And you know, she started to find herself attracted to boys. And so there was a young man named Jonathan Millerton that caught her eye. And they were sweet on each other. And the more time they spent together, the more they fell in love. They were always together. And this caused some envy from Dark Hawk because even though he never really expressed it, he also really liked Anna. And so when, he would, when Anna would come to him talking about Jonathan, he would get so jealous and so envious and so upset because he didn't understand what she saw in him and what she didn't see in, you know, Doc Hawk and himself. And so it made him really upset. Jonathan was a lumberman, you know, around this time in the Saginaw County in Richland Township, there was um, a forest, trees, lumber, and lumber started to become a big thing. And that's what he did. He was a lumberman and that's what he did. But the the more they started making money through this lumber business, the more people who started to settle in the area. And so the team, Jonathan's team, sought to gather more land, which means they would start encroaching on the Indians' land. And so they had went to the Indian tribe multiple times to try to get them to sell their land, and they wouldn't. And Anna and Jonathan 
are a couple now, a true, genuine, and love couple. And he knows how she feels about the Salk Indians. And she, he knows that she respects them. And so does he. And so together they figure that maybe they can convince the Salk tribe, you know, to sell their, you know, some of their land. But at that time, because Dark Hawk was so envious, so mad, he like turned the Salky tribe against them, had told them all of these bad things and, you know, about Jonathan and his people. Dark Hawk's family, not only was he upset, but his family was upset. They had this sense of that because Anna and Dark Hawk had grew up together, that she was meant for him, that she belonged to him. And Anna wasn't, she also, she at this time felt like their little, their culture was a little weird. She, she adored them and she drank their teas that they gave her to ward off evil. Um, and she enjoyed Dark Hawk. They somehow felt that it was her duty to marry him. And so with her going off with Jonathan, this also kind of built in that wedge that they had. And this is a piece that I left out, so I had to come back and share this with you. So this is kind of like a drop in. <laughs> that it kind of tore a wedge between the relationship that Anna had, Anna and Stella, not just Anna, but Anna and Stella had with the Sauk Indians. And so it would be two years before Anna stepped foot on their land again, um, because all of the tension between her, Jonathan, Jonathan's crew, Dark Hawk and the tribe. So one day Anna wanted to go and make peace with you know Dark Hawks and his family. When she got to the village, she found Dark Hawk's mom singing sparrow, bleeding and just unrecognizable. And what she told Anna is that the white men from the town had came in and raped and beat them and tortured them. Anna was devastated. And so she, you know, tried to clean Singing Sparrow up and, you know, told her everything was going to be okay. She was just devastated that this had happened and this was happening. Now I'll point out that Jonathan had nothing to do with it, but it was definitely his people that did have something to do with this. And so as Anna's holding her in her arms, Singing Sparrow passes away. Now Dark Hawk is not here at the time. He is off in another land trying to secure or help another tribe or something when this occurred. So he's not there. So as Singing Sparrow died in Anna's arm, Anna looks up and she can see the other women in the village looking at her. She could see um, Dark Hawk's little, little brother, Little Bear, also looking at her with tears in his eyes. And in that moment, because these women started to get angry. She can see sense their anger. So she got up, left Singing Sparrow there, and she fled. One of the things before Singing Sparrow said to Anna was, evil is near, which made chills run through Anna. It was chilling to me just to think about it because it felt like evil was there. Here's these men here to steal their land. It's like, why do you have to steal my land, rape and beat me? As Anna left that village, as she's running back to her and Stella's home, there was some specks of memories flooding back to her where she saw her mom, a vision of her mom burning. 
all of these memories started flying back at her. She started remembering a lot about that evening when her house caught on fire. But she decided that she wasn't going to share it. She was going to keep it all to herself. I know now in hindsight, not exactly sure if that was a good idea, but she chose not to tell anybody about those memories she was having that were coming back to her. At the age of 17, Anna married Jonathan. And so they're happy, they're in love, they get married. It's August of 1928, three months after they got married and Stella passed away. Shortly after that, Jonathan was summoned to go on a voyage in the Great Lakes for the lumber trade. So Anna at this point is all alone and she is feeling lonely. One, you know, the only family that she has had, was, you know, besides Jonathan, has passed away. And now her new husband is gone for who knows how long and so Remember those memories and those flashbacks that I told you that Anna was starting to have prior to her marrying Jonathan? Well, she is starting to get even more. Life is getting dark for her um, at times. But, you know, she's trying to keep her spirits lifted. She is staying busy. She's finding comfort in writing. During his time while Jonathan is away, she would write him letters, letters that she never intended for him to get or for her to send to him. But she is writing him letters and she's rocking on her porch and you know, she's dreaming and thinking about him. So at this point, Anna is kind of moving in and out of reality. It's like this darkness is coming over her. And sometimes she's battling with whether what is real and what is not real in her life. It's the spring of 1929. Anna is also starting to hear voices. At this time in her life, she's having like some mental episodes. It's almost like what her father went through or what caused him to kill his family that it may be something that was hereditary in their family that and I believe I read somewhere that it wasn't just her dad that there had been other people in her family so it could be something like schizophrenia or some mental illness that is starting to plague her and in the summer of 1929 in a way to kind of fulfill his fantasies and to get revenge all at the same time, Dark Hawk would visit Anna at night and he would rape her repeatedly, night after night. And she told no one, but she was writing her incidences down in her journal. And so I want to read a few excerpts out of her journal just so that you can just get the mindset that she was in at the time that this was happening to her. October the 8th, 1929. Jonathan, my love, I care for him not. You must believe that yours are the lips I crave. I fear that I can no longer tame Dark Hawk's pursuit. He waits for me veiled by the darkness of night. He comes for me while you are away. My love, I am ashamed for what has been done. My sorrow is great. I cried for you, but you did not wake. From your sleep, I beg for your forgiveness, my love and know you will come and save me. I wait for you to wake. In this instance, it's almost like 
she has fantasized him laying beside her and he's not waking to save her and this guy is coming to seek his revenge on her and no one is there to save her and it's so sad because you know here's this man her husband who she is imagining laying down beside her and she's asking for forgiveness as though the rape that she is enduring night after night is somehow her fault and so she's it's like she is seeking for him to forgive her and she feels ashamed for it it's it's sad but that entry was in october of 1829 um, around August, August of 1930, almost a year later, Anna got news that Jonathan's ship had sank and she was devastated. And so on August the 12th of 1930, this is the journal entry that she wrote. News came today. The talk of the ship that sank into the heart of the sea. My love, he's buried beneath the dark waters. I shall no longer abide in the sanctuary of my lover's earthen heart, for my love has gone. I shall no longer think of the sorrow of his family. I cry for him not for I have felt his embrace in the night. My lover waits behind the door of death in the fields of gold. He waits calling for me to join him there. I prepare for death fearing not the grave. My love has passed beyond the sand and sea and the moon and the stars. I leave not my home, but I enter into it. My lover leads me there. I shall go to the forest. I shall go to the shed. I leave not in sorrow. I cry not for my lost love. My lover calls me to calls to me as darkness sets in the sky. This is the last time I shall see the moon, the last of the stars. I shall make my way to the eternal land. Tonight my lover waits for me, Anna. This is sad because it's almost like you know she feels helpless helpless at this moment because here now her husband is dead there's no one to come and save her and so she has this guy that she is does not like like that who is coming into her home raping her repeatedly and no one to save her i just wish in these in this moment that she had told someone someone, anyone. Two days after Anna's last, last journal entry on August the 12th, 1930, Anna's body was found hanging from the rafters of her shed. This particular shed was Anna's shed by her house, but today it is found behind um, the Dice Road Cemetery. Now it was said that at one point, I'm not exactly sure if it was that this particular shed, she had turned it into an outhouse or later it had been turned into an outhouse. But today this shed is still up. She protects it. She protects this shed. On October the 30th of 1830, the day before Halloween, Jonathan returned from his selling trip, his lumber trip. Well, I don't. I won't call it a trip. It wasn't a trip. He wasn't having. He wasn't having fun. He returned. How about that? <laughs> Jonathan returned, and he had. He found out that his wife was dead. He was grieving. He was devastated. He felt to blame about leaving her by herself, but it didn't cost him to go and do the same and take the same steps that she had taken by taking herself. 
he also had not endured all of the things that she had endured while he was gone so you know can't compare what she went through and his grief it, it was it's totally different here this is Anna Rose who's being re raped repeatedly and she was suffering from mental illness so you know he continued to live his life in his house he me he missed his wife but he continued to go on and he would tell people in the town that he saw his wife all the time that he would go to the shed and have conversations with her and they would talk all the time they thought he was plum crazy they thought you know him saying that he was seeing her was like an act of the devil so they kind of shunned him away and so he spent his life just enjoying his wife um i think he he jonathan died at the age of 74 prior to his death Many people had heard about him speaking about his wife. So um, one of these organizations is called the Michigan Historical Research Foundation of Paranormal Activity. They came and would listen to his stories. They would document what he was telling them. And one of the researchers from this organization actually found Anna's journal Anna's journal in the walls of the shed and so he used this I think he wrote articles he may have wrote a book but that he found them and they had the this journal of hers until 1970 when they turned it over to the police they turned it over once they heard about all of the paranormal activity that was occurring on Dice Road they decided to give it to them and so, one, I couldn't find anything of this organization today, so I'm not exactly sure if they still exist. Also, I did not see any of any of Anna's journal entries, so I didn't actually get to see the journal pages. And so, how true any of this story is, I'm not exactly sure, but it is a tale that has been going, going on in this area for a while. I could not find anything or about Anna besides this particular story on Dice Road. I couldn't even find her husband's name and I did some real research through like Ancestry and you know some historical records to see if I can find them. So I'm not exactly sure how um, true this story is but it is a story that lives in this town. There has been many people who have claimed to have seen Anna Rose ghost they say that you know they've walked through the cemetery and it seems very calm and friendly um, at times you know at times it can seem very scary but anybody who has encountered her ghost has said that she looks um, sad and lonely and that she's been not like an evil ghost that's hunting the cemetery as you would think of big ghoul and goblin ghost but um they said that you know they didn't feel any fear of her ghost and so i brought this story because i thought it was like a love story gone wrong um we have a young lady who started out with a tragedy of her family of losing her entire family and then she finds love someone she's head over heels in love with and then she loses her aunt and then her husband goes away and then she thought she lost him and he would have been the only person who would have been able to protect her from this guy that's abusing her daily and nightly and so she felt like she had no other way out. Um, it's, it's sad because only if she had waited a, a month or two months, then she would have found out that her husband was truly alive. And, you know, I don't know her, you know, I don't know what she was going through. I can't even pretend to have understanding of it. So, you know, I, you know, people feel they do what they have to do in those moments that they have to do it and so I just say I just wish in that moment that she was going through that that she had told someone else whether it was someone in the town what Dark Hawk was doing to her and maybe they could have protected her so 
And so there has been many people who have said they have seen her ghost. And so there's one gentleman that actually took a picture of her ghost. And I'm gonna put it here. Do you, do you happen to see the ghost? And then, so now I'm gonna put another picture of where they actually saw the ghost. Well, he kind of highlighted the ghost. So see it right here? So, now, whether these pictures are real or not, I'm not sure, but those are the sightings of the ghost. That is the story. I wanted to give it, there's no real estate piece in here. <laughs> But I wanted to share that story with you and I hope you enjoyed it. So join me next week on my next story. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do it on. It's a toss up. It's a toss up. But please subscribe to get notifications of when I drop the next video. Please push the bell. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Help me make this better. Comments. Do you want to see anything else? Do you want me to see me talk about anything else? Please let me know in the comments. And I appreciate you for being here and helping me grow through these growing pains and challenges of doing this channel. Have a good evening.